I really hope you'll join me in this journey where I guide you through three phases to make your editing in DaVinci Resolve feel effortless. Let's get started with phase one. Imagine every time you wanted to drive somewhere, it took you five minutes to get the car started. And then while you're driving, the car just keeps slowing down for no reason. You press the accelerator down, but it feels like you're driving through mud, towing a caravan that doesn't have any wheels. To make editing feel effortless, you need to remove roadblocks and annoyances. So in phase one, we're gonna look at some simple ways to make DaVinci Resolve run faster and smoother. So if DaVinci Resolve is not running very well on your computer, the easiest and most expensive thing is to just buy a faster computer. But if that's not possible, we're gonna look at six ways to make DaVinci Resolve run faster. Tip number one is to make sure that you're editing your footage on a fast SSD, preferably an SSD that's internal to your computer. Make it the fastest one that you can get. Putting your footage that you're editing on a fast SSD is one of the simplest things you can do to speed up your overall editing experience. Tip two can make your editing experience feel a bit more snappy. Even though I'm editing on a beast of a PC that can even handle 8K footage, having these thumbnails on the clips seems to slow things down a bit and just makes things feel a bit less smooth. To turn these off, click this button, come up to thumbnail view and change this from film strip to none. Tip number three is to do with playback. If I play this back and notice up here that we're getting about 8.2 frames per second playback and in the actual playback, it's looking very jerky and jumpy. If you find that things aren't playing back in real time and it looks really jerky, come up to the playback menu, come down to timeline playback resolution and try changing this from full to half. Let's try and play this back again. And now we're getting real time playback at 24 frames a second. Just one thing to be aware of with this approach, I'm just gonna switch over to the color page and we're gonna zoom right in. If I change the playback resolution back to full, we can get a much better impression of our color grading and especially things like grain and sharpness. But if I change this and we'll go all the way to quarter resolution, notice now that we don't have really any good idea of what the final image is gonna look like when it's rendered. So if you're doing color grading, I suggest you keep the timeline playback resolution set to full. But when you're editing and cutting clips, you can set this to half or quarter. So I've set this back to full and as before, we're getting this really choppy, jerky playback at about 7.8 frames a second. Another thing that you can do is come up to the file menu, come down to project settings, and then come over to your timeline format. You can see at the minute our editing timeline is 3840 by 2160 UHD. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna drop this resolution down and we can change it to something like 1920 by 1080. Click save. And even though the playback resolution is set to full, if I play this back now, notice that we're getting full speed playback without any dropped frames or any jerkiness. You can go and edit your video as normal and then just before you go and render your video, come back to project settings and change the timeline resolution back to whatever the export resolution you want to be is. Then just come over to the deliver tab and export as normal. As before, just be aware that if you're performing color grading, you might want to do it with the timeline resolution set to your export timeline resolution and just leave this trick for when you're working in the edit page. So we're back editing in a 4K UHD timeline and we're back down to only playing back 8.1 frames a second with jerky looking playback. Tip five is to use the render cache to help play things back more smoothly. Come up to the playback menu at the top Top and come down to the render cache section. There's three options you can choose from, none, smart, and user. Let's start off by selecting smart and watch what happens in the timeline. Notice we get these two red bars above the clips and this is DaVinci Resolve using its smart feature to work out which of these clips need to actually be rendered to be able to be played back smoothly in real time. Now, the problem with this approach is it's really simple and easy, but sometimes it might make the entire timeline turn red which means it's going to create a render cache version of the whole timeline, which is gonna take a long time. And it's also gonna take up a lot of space on disk. If I play back this section that's turned blue, that means DaVinci Resolve has created render cache files for this section. And if I play this back, we should get full speed playback which you can see we do at the top. But if I switch to a red section, we're still gonna get jerky playback at only 
seven frames a second. So if you leave your computer alone and wait a while, all of these red lines will turn blue and then you'll get smooth playback. Another option is to go back to the render cache settings and choose user. User mode gives you the control over when to create render cache output. If you come up to the file menu and come down to project settings, make sure you're on the master settings section and scroll down to the optimized media and render cache settings. We'll be looking at these in more detail in just a second. In this section, you can choose the proxy media resolution, which we'll talk about in a minute, and also the render cache format and also the optimized media resolution. Basically, I've got these currently set to DNX HRHQ and we've got this tick box enabled to enable background caching after five seconds. So if we leave the machine alone for five seconds, then it's gonna create that background caching when we had it set to smart. We're currently in the user cache mode, and we have three options here that we can choose. We can choose to automatically cache fusion effects when we're in user mode, or automatically cache transitions in user mode. And if you use a lot of transitions or composites, then you might wanna turn those on just to have automatic caching enabled even when we're not in smart mode and we're in user mode. Another quick tip is you want to make sure this cache files location is on a really fast SSD because you could end up creating a lot of cache files and ideally on a different drive to your footage and also your DaVinci Resolve installation. Let's just go and cancel that. So what do we do when we've set the render cache to user mode? There's a few ways we can use it now. If you were using Fusion and Fusion was slowing things down you can right click on a clip and come up to render cache fusion output and turn that to on. We're not using Fusion here, I just wanted to mention it. And if we come over to the color page, notice that we've got a few nodes for this clip. What we can do is on the edit page, we can right click this clip that has color grading nodes and we can come up and we can choose render cache color output. If I tick this, we're gonna get the red bar above the clip and DaVinci Resolve is going to go and render the output from the color grading. Once this line turns blue, any blue sections will play back at real-time playback speed with no jerkiness. Let's come back to the color page with that turned on. And if we open up the timeline, we get the same red and blue bars. We'll just wait for the cache to complete and the bar to go blue. All right, so that's the entire line turned blue. So we're caching the color output for this entire clip. Watch what happens though now, if I go and add a new node to this node graph. We'll just go and add a serial node after this last node. But as soon as we do that, the entire line turns red again. And now we're gonna have to go and recache the entire color output, even though this node here doesn't actually have any color grading changes in it. I'll just undo that and head back to the edit page. And I'm gonna right click on this clip and we're gonna turn off render cache color output. So we'll just untick that and head back to the color page. Remember that we're still in render cache mode, user mode, but what we can do now is instead of caching the entire color output for all of the nodes, we can choose which nodes are causing the playback to slow down and then just cache individual node output. If we play this back, we're still getting pretty bad playback at about seven or eight frames a second. So what you can do is you can disable groups or individual nodes to find out which nodes are causing the slowdown. I happen to know that this node here is the main culprit for the slowdown, and that's because we're using noise reduction with ultra noise reduction. So what you can do with render cache mode set to user, you can right click on an individual node, come down to node cache, and then turn it on. When you do that, it goes red. And once again, we get the red line, which will eventually turn blue. But this is just caching the output of this one node, not all of the nodes together. And if I go and play back this blue section, we should see full speed playback, which we do. We'll just wait for the rest of that node's output to be cached in the entire line turn blue. And then we'll go and add another node just as we did before. This time, when we add a node at the end, Notice that the line doesn't go red again and it's still cached and if we hit play then we're still getting full speed playback. However, if we add a node before the cached node, we just choose add serial before, this time the entire line does go red and we'll have to wait for the caching to happen again. So as long as the nodes you've cached appear upstream, you're not going to get any problems with re-rendering. We'll just go 
and delete that. And we'll come back to playback and we'll turn off the render cache by setting it to none. Even if it's not your color grading slowing your computer down when it comes to playback, this clip here is an 8K time lapse I shot on a DJI RS2. You can see up here we're getting about eight and a half frames a second playback and it's looking really jerky and janky. Come over to the color page. We don't have any color grading applied. We've just got the default node. So caching the color output here won't actually help us. What we could do is come back to the playback, timeline playback resolution and set this to half. And if we play this back now, we're getting about 13, 14 frames a second. And we could come back again and set this to a quarter. And now we're getting almost full speed playback at 18 frames a second. This is 24 frames a second footage. So in this case, the timeline playback resolution is not helping us. Just gonna set it back to full. If this is the case, you can then use what's called proxies. And this is tip number six. Come over to the media page and then find the clip that's playing back badly. In this case, it's this DJI RS2 time-lapse. Right click on the headers at the top and make sure you've got proxy media path and proxy turned on and also online status. If I scroll across, you can see the proxy column here and you can drag these around if you want to. At the minute, we've got no proxies set for any of these files. A proxy is a second version of the original video file that can play back more easily. To set the proxy file format, come up to file menu, come down to project settings, and in the master settings, make sure you're in this optimized media render cache section, and then choose a proxy media resolution and proxy media format. DaVinci Resolve is pretty good at working out what resolution your system can play back when it comes to proxies, but you can also choose your own custom resolution. We'll leave this as choose automatic. And for the proxy media format, I've chosen DNxHRHQ, but you can try one of these other formats if this doesn't work very well on your machine. Let's just go and cancel that. To actually generate a proxy file, right click on the video file, come up here and choose generate proxy media. DaVinci Resolve will transcode the original file into whatever you set the proxy media output settings to be in the project settings. And depending on how many files you've got and how big they are, this could take some time. So you might want to do this at the start of your editing workflow while you go make a cup of tea or coffee. Now this is finished, we've got the proxy information here. The original file was 8K and DaVinci Resolve has automatically created a 4K UHD proxy file. And we can even see the media location and if you scroll across to the end here we've got this online status column I'm just going to drag that to the start Let's head back to the edit page and we'll try and play back this again but you're going to see that we're still not getting real-time playback we're still not getting 24 frames a second and the playback is really jerky and janky the reason for that is that even though we've generated a proxy we have to tell DaVinci Resolve to actually use the proxies to do that come up to the top right onto this drop down at the minute it's set to disable all proxies. Let's change this to prefer proxies. Now you can see down here we've got this little proxy icon and if we play this back now it's actually going to play back the proxy file not the original video file and we can see up here that we're now getting full 24 frames a second playback from that proxy file. Now that we've set this to prefer proxies if we come back to the media page now the online status has changed to proxy. As we saw earlier, you might want to change the proxy setting and choose original files when you're doing color grading, just so you get the original data and the original resolution. To do that, you can just disable all proxies and then what you see in the color grading page will be the final or the original video file, which of course means that it won't play back in real time. This video is not sponsored and if you want to help support me and this channel, please consider buying one of my eBooks like my DaVinci Resolve Editing Field Manual or my 52 laws of video ebook check out the first two links in the video description once you've finished phase one and it no longer feels like you're towing a wheelless caravan through mud you can start to make your actual editing of footage feel effortless that's what phase two is all about you could go and buy some of the really cool hardware that black magic has to make your editing experience faster but if you don't want to do that we're going to look at seven tips to make your editing feel effortless. Tip number one is to familiarize yourself with the trim edit mode which you can select by clicking this button or hitting T on the keyboard. What trim edit mode does is it allows you to really quickly adjust the size of individual clips and then automatically ripple away any space that that would have left. Without this what you need to do is change the length of the clip, click in this empty space and hit delete to remove that space. If we enable trim edit mode by hitting T we can simply just come up to the top left of a clip and drag 
the mouse left and right to either make the clip shorter or longer. And as we do this, it automatically changes the following clips. You can do this at the end of a clip. When I do this, notice that it's not moving the top clips, only the clips we select. But if I ripple this, it's going to move these clips that are after it. Let's just switch back to selection mode by clicking this or hitting A on the keyboard. Number two is to use the arrow keys on your keyboard to quickly navigate around the timeline. If you use the up arrow, it's going to move to the previous edit point. And if you use the down arrow, it's going to go to the following edit points like this. You can use the left arrow to move one frame earlier or the right arrow on your keyboard to move one frame later. If you hold down shift and use the left arrow, it's going to move one second earlier and shift and right will move one second later. If you want to add a new edit point, you can hit control B on the keyboard. Now we've got this clip cut into two. And if you have multiple clips and hit control B, it's going to cut through all of those. If you've got a clip selected and you hit control B, it's only going to create a cut for the selected clip but if you do have a clip selected and you want to create a cut through all of the clips use Control shift a to unselect everything and then Control b to create the cut tip number five is to use the keyboard shortcuts to quickly trim the start or end of clips and automatically ripple up and get rid of the space what you could do is use Control b to create the edit point select this clip and then use shift backspace to ripple delete the space away but a quicker way is to just position the playhead where you want and use control shift left curly bracket watch what happens when i do this it trims away the start of the clip and if you want to trim away the end of the clip move your playhead here and instead use control shift and right curly bracket that will trim away everything on the right hand side of the playhead and then move everything up to fill up the gap if you wanted to move this clip so it appears after this clip, what you could do is select everything here, move this across, move this clip across, delete this space and this space, and then we'd have the clip in the right place. But just to undo that, instead, click on the clip, hold down Control Shift, and use the full stop button on the keyboard to move that clip along the timeline. If you want to move it left, use Control Shift and comma to shuffle things along to the left. Tip seven is to do with playback speed. If I just hit space bar, so if I tap on this, this is already, you can hear that's playing back at normal speed, but that's gonna slow you down. Instead, hit L on the keyboard to start normal speed playback, hit it again and again and again to speed up playback. Let me show you what I mean. So if I tap on this, this is already loaded. And here I've got all of the different and either hit spacebar or K to stop playback. You can also do this in reverse by hitting J a number of times. And that's gonna save you so much time. I hope you're getting loads of value out of this video so far. If you are, please consider subscribing and also hitting the like button. I'd really appreciate it, thanks. Okay, now our car is running smoothly and our caravan has wheels. Phase three is all about maximizing the amount of work not done. Imagine you were making a delicious cheese and tomato sandwich. You wouldn't drive to the shop five times and each time just go and buy one tomato and drive it home. That's a lot of tomatoes for one sandwich. Quite often we do the same thing over and over again for every video we edit when what we could do is just set it up once and then quickly reuse that thing over and over again for every single future video we edit. By maximizing the amount of work that we don't repeat over and over again we can make our editing feel Effortless. And that's exactly what these next six tips are about. Rather than having to go and set project settings up like your resolution every time you create a new project, instead come to the file menu and choose project settings. Change your timeline resolution, your frame rates, your color settings, and anything else to the settings you used most often. Then come up to the three dots and choose set current settings as default preset. You'll get this warning box and if you click update every new project you create will have all of these settings as their defaults if you routinely work with a few different project types so for example different timeline resolutions you can set up custom presets for each of those let's go and change this to 1920 by 1080 just as an example then come up to these three dots and come down and choose save current settings as preset we'll give this preset a name just call it demo hd and click ok and now whenever we create a new project, we can really quickly switch between different 
presets. If I change this back to UHD, come up to these three dots and choose our demo HD preset that we just created. And we just hit load preset to retrieve all of the settings for that preset. If you find yourself using the same effects and titles over and over again, you can set them as favorites. Let's say you use the Gaussian blur quite a lot. All you need to do is find this little star next to it and click it. The little star turns white. And then in the favorite section down here, you'll now see your Gaussian blur. This also also works with titles let's say you use this scroll effect turn on that favorite by clicking the star and down here if you click the root of favorites you see all of your favorites neatly organized here we've got the scroll effect that we just added and the gaussian blur that we just added now it's really quick and easy to drag that effect onto your footage number three is all about power bins open up the media pool and if you don't see the power bin section make sure show power bins is selected in these three dots drop down menu once you've got it selected you'll see this section here. I've already created a number of custom power bins, which you can do by right clicking on master, choosing new bin, and then giving the power bin a name. Just call this demo one. Once you've created a power bin, you can drag things into this section and then they'll be available to quickly reuse in every future project. For example, you can drag external assets in from your file system, just drag and drop them over this power bin. And now anytime you want to add an arrow to any project, you can quickly drag it into the timeline. You can also drag DaVinci Resolve items into this power bin. Let's go over to the effects. We'll go and grab an adjustment clip. We'll open up the inspector and we'll just zoom in and maybe change the position. Come over to the file tab and give this clip a name. We'll just call it my zoom clip. And then you can drag this over onto your power bin and now in any future project anytime you want to recreate that zoom just drag it over the top of your footage and now we've got an instant zoom effect tip number four is to do with color grading so we'll switch over to the color page and if you have a series of nodes that you've got set up which perform some kind of color grading tasks to create a certain look once you've created the look you want open up the gallery section at the top left we've got nothing in there at the minute right click on the image and choose grab still now we've got this still here. If you want to, you can give this an additional label, call it my look. And then what you can do is drag this from the stills one section over on top of the power grade. Let the mouse button go and switch over to power grade. And we can see we've got this my look grade now. Anything in this power grade section will be available to all of the projects you edit. So if I right click this and choose reset all nodes and layouts, right click on my look that we just created and choose apply grade, we instantly get all of those nodes back. I've actually got this set up already. So when I'm doing a talking head video, I can right click on this, choose apply grade and watch what happens to the image. I instantly get this look so I don't have to individually color grade every video I make in the studio. Let's come back to the edit page and let's go and choose a video transition. Let's choose block glitch. We'll drag that over here and this creates this glitchy transition between the two clips. Open up the inspector. Make sure you've got the transition selected and not the clip. And now you can choose a duration. If, for example, you wanted this transition to be a really long or really short transition, you can set it to however much you want by either dragging and dropping or entering values here and then choosing set as default duration. If I delete this and drag it in again, we'll now get that default duration every time we use that effect transition. All right, tip number six for this, we're gonna head over to the Fairlight page and let's say that you use the same basic audio tracks for every video you make. Let's change this to music. We'll add another track for sound effects. Maybe the music and sound effects, we can preset some volume levels. For the dialogue tracks, we turn on the compressor and also add some EQ. Once you've edited a video and you find yourself using the same things over and over again when it comes to audio, come up to the Fairlight menu, choose Presets Library, make sure that this filter by is set to Fairlight Configuration Presets, and then choose Save New. It will ask us if we'd like to create a new preset or update the current one. So we're going to choose create new and then give it a name effortless and click OK. Now you can very quickly recreate this track setup by choosing one of the Fairlight configuration presets and choosing apply. In this case, it won't do anything because that's the same setup that we've got at the minute. The real use of this is that when it comes to creating a new timeline, you can tick this use Fairlight preset box 
choose the Fairlight preset. Here's the one we just created effortless. Hit create. Now we've got this new timeline, but look down here, we've got the music and sound effects tracks that we just added. And if we head back to Fairlight, this new timeline that we just created has got all of these things set up, ready to go, such as the dynamics and the EQ. This playlist has all my DaVinci Resolve tutorials. Feel free to check it out. And if you like this video, feel free to leave me a comment. That'd be really nice. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.